Hi, I'm Josh Jacobson with Classic Tutorials. Now, seeing that this is our first tutorial, we're just going to be going over the basics of what things are in a studio and, and a little bit on how to use them. Uh, so let's do that now. So let's talk about dynamic microphones. Dynamic microphones are more durable and they can normally take a higher amount of sound or SPL. The reason they call them dynamic microphones is because they can usually take a more uh, broader dynamic range than other microphones can. Um, now they're very durable, you can usually hammer and nail in with some of them, uh, which is why they're really great for drums, people use them a lot on drums, and also they're very durable, which also makes them great for drums in case your drummer hits them with a stick, you don't want your really expensive, uh, fragile microphone breaking, so use a dynamic and it'll still get a good sound. Now let's talk about condenser microphones. Condenser microphones are different than dynamic microphones in a sense that they use uh, capacitance to get their sound. Um, that's why you'll also hear them called capacitor microphones. Um, basically what it is, is that two plates are magnetically charged and how sound affects the plate is that it will move closer and further away from the plate um, creating signal that will transfer magnetically to the other plate. Now, now condenser microphones are a lot more sensitive and they also tend to be a lot more fragile and ironically they also tend to be a lot more expensive than regular dynamic microphones. Now condenser microphones provide you with a much bigger sound uh, than dynamic microphones meaning that they'll take up a lot more space in your mix so they're very hard um, if you have a lot of condenser microphones uh, in your final product it, you're gonna find it's a little harder to mix uh, so be, be really careful about what you choose your condensers to be used on because they will take up a very broad spectrum of your, of your overall sound. A lot of times with condenser microphones you'll see matched stereo pairs and these are microphones that are almost exactly identical. What the company will do is that they will test thousands of microphones against another microphone for similarities in their frequency response and the ones that have the closest will become matched stereo pairs and those will come with two charts to show you how close they are together. Another type of microphone is a ribbon microphone and they call it a ribbon microphone because the diaphragm isn't really uh, a coil or a piece of, of stuck metal, it's, uh, it's a very thin tight ribbon that when sound hits it, it vibrates and that's how it picks up the sound itself. Ribbon microphones used to be very expensive and very fragile, but nowadays with uh, advances in technology, they can handle a higher SPL than they used to, and they're also not as expensive as they used to be. So let's talk about tube mics now. Tube mics are similar to condensers in the fact that they require their own outside power source, um, but the difference between them is that they actually have a tube inside them uh, that the electricity passes through and uh, it creates the tube itself creates uh, harmonic overtones uh, that you wouldn't normally hear uh, anywhere else and that's and that's why they're so great uh, one thing to mention about a tube mic is that there's always it always has its own proprietary cable so be careful with that cable because uh, if you if you lose it or you break it you have to buy another one and uh, they can be pretty expensive uh, another thing about tube mics is that they take a little while to heat up, so you'll notice sometimes if you plug in a tube mic immediately and start immediately uh, recording with it, over time as the tube itself heats up, uh, the sound will change and that could throw off uh, what you've been recording. So it's always good to, to leave the tube mic on for, for about an hour uh, before the session so that it heats up. And um, after a while, it will start to heat up a lot and uh, could uh, compromise the electricity with inside all that heat so what most people do is that they'll turn the tube microphone upside down so that the heat dissipates up um, that's just general physics heat uh, travels up so that's tube mics so let's say you're a drummer and you just want to record some stuff but you don't really want to do the headache of, of really uh, looking into what mics sound good for what you know drums it, it can get a little bit complicated um, I would suggest to get a uh, microphone drum kit. Audix, um, the Audix kit is pretty good and I would recommend it. Um, it's only about $700 but it's got some really good mics in it. Uh, the i5 which models a uh, SM57 which is an industry standard mic for a snare. Um, 
The D2, uh, these are the Tom mics for it. You get two in the Audix kit, and those are pretty good. Uh, they're very, they're very good all around for attack and tone. So, so I would really suggest the whole kit itself. Uh, the D4, very good for Tom, uh, floor Tom. It's very good for a floor Tom. And then the D6, which is a great kick drum mic. If you're not going to get the kit itself, at least get the D6 kick drum mic. It's such a good sound. Um, it's very punchy, uh, so it'll really cut through your mix really well, and you'll you'll really like that. Um, also, another microphone that a lot of people use uh, for drums is uh, the MD421 made by Sennheiser, and they use it a lot on toms. You'll see it a lot in just about any industry standard session. So what if you're a guitar player and you've got all this crazy mic stuff that you really don't want to worry about, you just want to go right from your guitar into whatever you're recording to? Well, they make some great things called DI boxes. I would recommend the JDI. Basically, what a DI box does, or direct inbox, is it will convert uh, instrument level signal to balance mic level signal uh, to go into your preamp and eventually into whatever you're recording to. Uh, and this is just bare bones, recording right into whatever you want. Now what if you don't want any of this stuff? You just want to get your keyboard and you just want to play around, record some stuff, um, and maybe have it play back. So that, kind of like a player piano. Well, they make a great thing called MIDI. And basically what it does is you connect your keyboard to a MIDI interface, and then you connect that interface to your computer, and it will record your MIDI data uh, because MIDI isn't sound itself, there's no audio in any, anything related to MIDI is not audio. It's just data recorded uh, saying what key is hit and when that key is released. Note on, note off. Uh, so it's also a great way to record your data and you can manipulate that data with a mouse. Uh, you can edit it and then you can replay it back into your keyboard using the same sounds that you like from your keyboard or using the sounds that you like in a DAW software synth. Another way you can record drums is using a thing called triggers. Triggers are basically uh, kind of similar to MIDI in that you would mount the, uh, you'll mount a trigger on a drum head and every time you hit the drum head it will sense the vibration and send MIDI data to your computer. And you can use that MIDI data to trigger some drum sounds that you really like and that you already know are very good other than having to go out and find that sound. Um, a lot of times they don't tell you this but uh, even when they record drums, they end up replacing a lot of the sounds with samples so that it sounds beefier and that it sounds bigger. Uh, so this isn't an uncommon practice. So what is a preamp? A preamp is something that takes mic level signal and converts it to line level signal. Some of the most basic controls you'll have on a preamp are the trim itself to, to boost the, the gain or the volume of the signal coming in from the microphone. Uh, also, you have uh, an option for 48 volt phantom power for your condenser microphones. Uh, you also have the option to flip the phase of your microphone 100 degree, 180 degrees out of phase. And uh, this can sometimes be used if you're, if you're, if you're having a lot of phase problems. Um, what, what the rule of thumb with phase, uh, with phase buttons is that you always click to check phase on all your microphones and whatever has more low end is, um, is the way you want to go, whether it's in or out of phase. Now a preamp also comes with a pad so that you don't overload uh, the circuitry in the preamp with what's coming from the microphone. You don't want to break your really nice stuff. Uh, so they put a pad there just to be safe. Um, a lot of times it's used heavily on drums, um, but be careful, you know. Always, always remember gain staging. Gain staging is a very important thing. Uh, and basically what that means is that you want to make sure that the level coming from the mic isn't too hot and distorting the mic. Um, if it is not distorting the mic and it's coming into the preamp but it's distorting the preamp, then you hit the pad to protect the preamp. Um, but keep in mind, when you do this, you're adding more signal, uh, more noise to your signal. You're adding more noise to your signal, so be careful. It, you don't always need to use it. Uh, sometimes you can put a pad on the mic if it's too loud and uh, that'll just kind of help it. So always remember gain staging. Start from the beginning and work your way up. 